Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're starting the process of dividing some of our dahlia tubers, which are currently in storage. I intend on doing this process over time this year, not in one big fell swoop. That's why I'm starting a little bit earlier because we have a whole bunch of crates. We grew more this year or this past year than we did the prior year. Uh, so it's just gonna be a little bit more of a lengthy process, but I thought I would show you some really close up looks at the tubers, where I'm making my cuts, what I use, and so on and so forth. Just because I remember the first time I did this, uh, I was so worried. I was overwhelmed by the process because I really had no idea what I was doing, if I was ruining it. Uh, but I think over time, and the more you do something, the more confident you feel doing it. We're gonna do most of the process out here just to kind of contain the mess. And just like last year, after we're done dividing, uh, I'm gonna pack them back up in their crates and they're going back in the root cellar until it's safe to plant them outside. And for us in a zone six, that's usually sometime in May. This is where I plan on doing most of the work here and I'm gonna do just one crate at a time. I can't remember how many crates we have but there's over 10 in there. So I figure if I divide one crate let them sit out here for a day or two so that all the cut ends like this right here I just cut this this was one clump and we're gonna get four plants out of it this year. Uh, but you want to let those cut ends heal over a little bit so you've got to have a spot where you can let them lay out where they're, they're not gonna freeze. And then we'll put them back in the crate in the vermiculite and put them back in the root cellar. We have showed you our storage method before. Works super great for us. These are the crates that our bulbs come in every year. So see how they are slatted? So you can use like milk crates or even a cardboard box because air still will exchange with a cardboard box, just not anything airtight. And then we double layer burlap inside there, which is also breathable and then vermiculite has been the best for us and we are reusing it from year to year. So when we prep it for the tubers, we put a tiny bit of water in with a vermiculite just to slightly moisten it. Not enough for it to stick together, but enough for it to kind of feel cool in your hand. And that's pretty much it. So once we're done with all the storage supplies, we put the vermiculite out on the ground, like on a tarp in a really thin layer and allow it to completely dry. And then we put it in garbage bags, put it up in the loft in our barn, and it just sits there until the next fall when we need it again. We also save the burlap and the crate. So once you have your setup in place, it's really quite easy. In terms of storage over the winter, we have ours in a root cellar that maintains a temperature somewhere between 40 and 45 degrees. Typically, dahlia tubers want to be stored between 40 and 55 degrees, somewhere in that range. And I think our humidity is usually right around 50%, give or take. So you can see I already unearthed a bunch of these, but uh, the goal when you're packing them in here is to not have any of the clumps touching each other, but you want a little bit of vermiculite around each one of them. So we do most of our cleanup though, like all the dirt is removed in the fall. Uh, and maybe we'll link that video down below so that we can skip that step right now. It's all kind of a timing thing too. I mean, you can do your dividing in the fall after you've cleaned them, um, you allow them to dry, you divide them, and then some people individually wrap them in plastic wrap. I've never tried that, so I can't say whether or not it works really, really well. Uh, and I think you could probably store them with this method that way too. And that way in the spring, you don't have to do dividing, but this time of year, you know, February, March, there's not a ton going on. Uh, so it's a really good time to work on this kind of project slowly. So what I'd like to do now is take one of these clumps into the studio and give you some really close up looks at what we're dealing with. All right, I brought in a few different clumps. One that's really large, that has a ton of tubers. This one is really thick especially at the top and they can be a little bit more difficult to attack and then a couple of other ones I found one that had a pierced tuber that we need to remove completely uh, so we'll go through each one of these a little bit slower just so you can see all the steps I use my Felcos the most in this process most of the time I can make most of my cuts with these if I find that especially on like the thicker clumps that I need something a little bit longer I use a pruning saw so something like this, you can use a sharp knife. I find having a little bit of a longer blade is a little bit more helpful for this process. And then this is kind of important for this process. You can see I've already cleaned this one off, but vermiculite tends to want to stick. So if you've got something to just brush off real quick, you don't have to get them squeaky clean, but just so that you can really see the top and see the eyes, it's quite helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna clear the center area off here and we'll talk about the anatomy 
of a tuber. So in order to grow a dahlia, you have to have a tuber that has three parts. You need a body, a neck, and an eye. So this part right here, this thicker part, which it looks different for every single tuber. Sometimes they're completely round, like a round ball. Sometimes they're really skinny and long. And then you need a neck, which sometimes they're really pronounced and really beautiful like this one. Sometimes you can hardly see a neck, but you need to have the space in between the body and this upper part intact. You can't have it broken or anything like that. And they are pretty fragile, so you have to be careful. And then you need an, an eye, which is the growth point. And they're a little bit hard to determine. However, when you divide in the spring rather than dividing in the fall, oftentimes the eyes have had a chance to swell a little bit and they're a little bit easier to find. So I have a pencil used as a pointer, but see this right here? That little kind of swollen growth point right there, that little bump? that is where the plant will start to grow. And sometimes it's a little bit hard to determine, but let me show you another tuber, another example. So this one, kind of the same story. We've got the body, we've got the neck right here, which is nice and firm and intact. And then right up here, see that little bump? That's your growth point. So these are beautiful. When I'm dividing dahlias, sometimes I end up with individuals like this, which is totally fine. I've planted them both individually like this and in larger clumps, and I get pretty much the same result. Uh, but sometimes I'll end up with two or three still attached to each other, which is completely fine. Like in this case right here. So I planted this with one tuber last year and it multiplied to five. Uh, you could go ahead and plant this clump of fly five again if you wanted to. We're gonna probably divide it two, into two or three different pieces. Uh, but sometimes they grow so intertwined that you can't tell which part belongs to which growth point. And so at that point, you just have to make the decision to leave them together. That way you're guaranteed you'll get a plant. Okay, so let's just start with this first clump here, which I've already cleaned off. This is a variety called Rockstar. And usually I just assess the whole thing. I make sure that the, the bodies are all still intact. There's no softness going on. There's no rot. This one looks really good. So oftentimes I will take my clippers and just make a cut to cut it in half and start with that and then keep dividing it further. So it's really quite hard to see in here, but I can tell that these two are kind of coming off this other clump. So I'm gonna make a cut and I hope you can see this. And make a cut right down the center. Like that. See how those two came off beautifully? So we've got the body, the neck, there's a growth point right here. Body, see how the neck is so short on this one? And then the growth point is right here. So you could cut this one again. I'm gonna leave these two together and plant them in the same hole. And then with this one, because this tuber, the neck is a little bit loose, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave these three together as well. I feel like that's the best course of action. Now we're gonna let these set out in the greenhouse. It's staying right about at 60 at night out there. We'll let these set uh, for a day or two so that the cut ends can dry and then we'll pack them back up. Let's look at the next clump. This one's pretty clean. You can see we've got some rot going on in that one right there. Yep. So this one was pierced and we just missed it before we got it stored. So I'm gonna just cut this one off right from the gate. We don't want that which is a shame because look at the growth point. Look at this. It's starting to really sprout right there, but it wouldn't last long. I don't think any more in storage. I think it would eventually rot and die off. So this one is going in the trash. So at this point, I think I'm gonna leave these three together just to make sure because we've got one tuber that looks like it was damaged, but it's completely dry. So I'm not going to make an additional cut. I think that one will be okay. This neck is a little bit fragile. This one looks perfect, so I'm just gonna leave these all together. Okay, you guys, this is a huge clump. Let's clean it first. This is why I'm doing the rest of this project out in the greenhouse, because I can contain all of the mess very easily, and I don't have to vacuum a floor. So I'm going to look around. This tuber is no good right here. See how it's kind of squishy, the neck is broken. We'll get rid of that. This one. It's looking a little sketch to me, but I think it's fine. It's completely firm. It's just kind of darker colored. Everything looks pretty good. So I'm gonna look at it from underneath and it looks like we have an obvious area where we can cut it in half for the most part. I'm gonna remove these three first. They're kind of separate. Best just to go slow when you're doing this. And if you sacrifice, sometimes you have to sacrifice tubers and that's okay too. It's just all kind of part of the process. There. So 
So there's our first division. I'm going to cut right down here. Ooh, there's like some rot going on in the crown here. I'm glad we're getting this done. That one will still be okay. We've got uh, right here the body, the neck, and a growth point right here. We will still probably get growth from this one. Okay, the next cut is going to be here. Then again, right here. Okay, this will be perfect. I'm just gonna leave this attached. We've got the body, the neck. There's a growth point right here. It's just where you kind of see a little swollen area. Uh, and sometimes it's more apparent. So right here we've got the body, the neck, and then that growth point is way more obvious. Boy, look at the center of that. I didn't even realize. I don't know, let's see. I think that one will be okay. Neck is damaged on this one. I mean, I could try to pop this one up and see if it does anything. This one, we've got a body, a neck, and there's still a growth point right here. I'm gonna keep these in a separate pile though because I might try to just pre-sprout those and see if they do anything. Okay, the rest of the clump. Boy, I might leave a lot of this together. I think I'm just gonna leave these four together right here. And this part will have a chance to dry over the next little bit while we let it set out. So we should be okay. Right there. And then this one, we've got bodies, neck, neck. This one I think is not gonna survive. I cut right through the neck on that one. That's one I chose to sacrifice. But we've got bodies, necks, and there's a growth point here, and growth point. I think there might just be one growth point on that. So from that one clump, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two of which I will pre-sprout to see what happens, six of which I think will grow wonderfully. And this is the last one I wanted to show you because some of them come out so gnarled and so thick. Um, that sometimes it's worth just planting them the way they are. But let's clean this off and start dissecting. It's just so much easier. Some of the, the clumps, like the last one we divided, they just get so enormous. You would have to dig such big holes to plant them every year uh, for those of us who need to lift them that it just isn't, isn't as efficient. And if we can get extra plants and give, uh, give them away to friends or expand our own patch, that's always fun. Okay, this one is Rockstar. In a case like this, there's still some soil in here. Everything looks really healthy, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make a cut. Sometimes you just have to just whale into it, kind of hope for the best. You'll probably sacrifice one or two tubers and that's okay. So this is the top, obviously, where the stems came out last year. I'm gonna cut right here. See what happens. Okay, that makes it more manageable right from the gate. So we can see what we're dealing with. This one, I will pre-sprout. I think we'll be okay though, because we've got a body, we've got the neck, and we've got an eye right here. Yeah, I think we're good. This one, I'm gonna remove these two that look kinda atrophied a little bit, and I'm gonna leave this together in one clump. This one I'd like to divide one more time so you can see a little valley in here. That's where I want to div divide it, I think. Cut right there. Yep. Everything looks good. And I'm gonna leave these together. So that one clump turned into four, which you could definitely take down further than I just did. Um, but I find that this works really well. So that's what I'm doing with the, all of our dahlias, one crate at a time. All of the varieties, for the most part, were stored in the same crates, so I'll probably have more repeats of the same things that I've just divided right here for you. Uh, and so I'll keep all the like varieties together, and then we'll make sure to pack them back up with good labeling. And then in May, we'll pull them back out. So I think we'll just gather this stuff up and head back out to the greenhouse.
crate is done. Look at how many tubers just in this one crate. That's just crazy to me. So this whole section right here, these are all rock stars. Then we've got Cafe Con Leche, beautiful creamy white. Penny Lane, that's what's in this pile right here. This was my favorite new addition last year. I hadn't grown this, this variety until this past season, but crazy difference in the tuber sizes. <laughs> Look at that one versus like that one right there versus some little ones. You just never know, they all come out so different. There was just the one clump of night butterfly. And then I saved this little pile right here. These are all ones that I think, like I think there's a growth point right here, but I'm just not positive on some of these. Like the neck got kind of cut, but it might have a growth point right. Let's see, where did I think there was one? Maybe right in here somewhere. So I'm going to let these heal, let the cuts heal, and then I'm gonna line them all up in a shallow tray of soil, kind of like I'm doing with ranunculus and anemones, and I'll try to pre-sprout these. And if we get action on some of them, then I'll just go ahead and pot them up and move them with my others that I have potted up over there. So I think I'm gonna tackle one or two more crates because this process is not taking me as long as I thought it was going to. I think just getting a little bit of experience under my belt and doing this a few times, you just, your confidence grows a little bit and then you can go a little bit faster. So if you're doing this for the very first time, just know it gets easier and of course cheddar what are you doing don't mess up my piles dude and here's a closer look at what we've got going over here we've got nine out of the 30 that i potted early have sprouted i've just been moving like one or two cans in here per day once i see some green or i see even a little shoot coming up i move them out here because they get a ton more light and it's warm enough in here Anyway, that's what will happen with these that we pre-sprout. Whichever ones start to grow, we'll just grow them on early, hopefully for some early blooms. I'm also planning on writing an inventory. <laughs> He's in the crate. Do not use that as a litter box. <sighs> Didn't even think about that. Are you using that? Uh-uh. <gasps> Shame. No litter box in here, Cheddar. He totally was going to do that. Oh, gross, I need to cover these. I'm also going to be writing an inventory, just a sheet of paper with uh, what varieties and how many of each variety are in each crate so that um, I can kind of plan my space based on the new ones I've got coming in. And that way I'll know how many extra tubers I have to give away. But let's head to the root cellar and grab another crate. I was gonna prune blueberries today and I stepped outside. It was a lot windier earlier. So I thought today was a good Dahlia dividing day instead. Yeah, see 45, it's actually at 63% humidity. It does kind of creep around a little bit. The humidity does. Do this one next. So we've got one, these are glads, I think gladiolus. So one, two, three, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, that's potatoes, so 18, 18 crates, this box, and these two boxes are all dahlias. <laughs> oh my goodness.
right, so I ended up making it through five crates today. That means I have 16 more crates, one huge box, and two small boxes left to go through, and I have 374 tubers sitting here from just these five crates. So there's two empty crates, three empty crates, and then all the tubers are sitting here on the table. They all look so good. I ran into three tubers, including the one I showed you when we were taking that clump apart in the studio. Three total that were soft that I ended up cutting off and throwing away. That's pretty good. This method of storage has just worked out so well for us. It's funny too, you start noticing little differences between varieties like the poo variety. They're definitely more red. So there were a couple of loose ones in the uh, crate and I knew that they were the poo variety based on how they looked. So right here, there are 70 tubers, which I did include in the count. I'm going to pre-sprout those just to make sure that they're viable. I'm pretty sure we've got a growth point and you know necks that are intact. Everything looks okay, but I'm just not 100% sure. So the count might go down just slightly based on you know what does and doesn't come up here but the rest of them, 304 of them, are all 100% viable, no soft spots, strong eyes, looking good. It just amazes me how prolific this crop is with how easy they are to grow. And it kind of depends too on if you're wanting to take the time to dig and store all of them. We've toyed with the idea of possibly leaving ours in the ground because our, our winters have been mild over the past like three years. We are a zone six and they're a zone eight through 11. So that's like super risky, especially because they're out there in the middle of nothing's protecting them. But if we, if we really mulch ours up, we, we might try it with a few of them because that part is pretty labor intensive but in terms of like growing season and the amount of cut flowers you get and how much the the tubers expand it's just amazing to me so I'm gonna read through my list of what I uh, divided today so we can toss some pictures up on the screen because they're gorgeous so today we dealt with Rockstar Night Butterfly Cafe Con Leche Penny Lane Snowbound Pink Mix Breakout Romantic Mix Lake Ontario Thomas Edison Pooh Holly Hill Lemon Ice turn the page here Melody Dora, Gudoshink, Gudoshink, Bishop of Oxford, Small World, and Linda's Baby. So other than coming out tomorrow or even the next day and packing these back up in their crates in the same vermiculite that they came from, that's pretty much it. And then we'll bring them back out in May when we're ready to plant. When we plant ours, all we do is we use an auger to dig all of our holes 12 inches apart from each other. I throw in Biotone starter fertilizer, land and sea compost. We plant them, water them once, and we don't water them again until I start to see growth up above the soil surface. So the second I see a little bit, I did the same thing with the potted ones. I watered them in and then when they started to sprout, I watered them again lightly. And then at that point, we start watering more consistently. During the hot part of the summer, we have to water every single day because it's hot and it's dry. I didn't fertilize them other than that initial application of soil amendments when we planted. Uh, no insect pressure that I've noticed over the past few years at least. And what else? I don't pinch them. I didn't pinch a single one last year. The initial bloom is always tucked in a little bit so it's tough like you can float that one in a really shallow vase. Other than that all the rest of the stems are really long and nice and I get super bushy plants. So anyway it's just been a really good experience for us and I know everybody's climate's a little bit different years are different too so some years you may have an amazing year with a crop and the next year is so so year and I usually hear about it like when I worked down at the garden center I would hear people just like tons of people say that their beans weren't doing well it was just like a bad bean year so that just happens every once in a while where you know things just don't work out quite how they did the year before and there's really no explaining it uh, but overall this has been an amazing crop I hope the shots we got uh, were really clear and you were able to to see and maybe kind of, um, I don't know, demystify the whole dividing thing because that is an intimidating process in the beginning. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I have so much more dividing to do and I'll be working on that. You might even see it in a, a video or two as I kind of work through the whole stack that's in our root cellar. I hope you guys are having a great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye.